The second question we had tonight was from Barry. And Barry asks, has anyone built a root cellar instead of the more common walk-in cooler? I've got enough slope to dig into to have most of the walls underground. Neighbor has a backhoe too. I thought I might have a walk-in entrance and a cool bot. All right, cool. Very um, good. Great question. Uh, great that you're thinking about saving energy. Energy is important. Um, it's really interesting. In this area, we've got a number of fossil fuel power plants, and it's interesting when the, when the temperature in the summer starts to hit about 80, 85 degrees, there's this entire power plant that comes on solely because of that. And, uh, you know, I think it's, I forget how big the plant is, but it's got eight giant smokestacks, and you can just drive by and see all that heat going right out of there as it's generating electricity. Which is kind of concerning, all that heat just going off in the environment. Anyway, to get back to our question at hand, is let's kind of sketch ourselves uh, Barry's slope right here. Something like this, probably more like this. So what Barry's going to do here, is he's probably going to, you know, cut this out here. And he's got to be careful that he doesn't put the root cell like this or water's going to run right in and flood his root cellar. But what he wants to make sure is that the bottom of the root cellar is slightly above that slope there so he can still grade away from it and not down the thing. Um, we'll put our back here and like this. Um, if he's going to put a roof on it, and I've definitely seen people put a, a concrete roof and then put dirt right over it. So he's going to have this you know, kind of mound just dirt up now and it's probably going to go like this. Something like that. Maybe a little retaining wall there. He's going to have his front there. Maybe he'll wrap the sides with some as well, too. So that's what it's going to kind of look like. So the advantage of going with a... Um, the advantage of going with a root cellar like this is... Okay, so during the summer, you have your walk-in cooler. And your temperature during the summer might be 90 degrees outside and you want to keep it at 30 so you got a difference of 60 degrees. And so when you got that difference of 60 degrees, that's a heck of a lot to cool. Um, can you guys see that on the screen there? Yeah, barely. Um, but if you got it in here, your, air, your, your ground temp is around 55. It depends on where you are in the U.S. It depends on all sorts of things, but around 55. So you try to keep this at 32 or 30, well, somewhere around here, 30, 36 probably. Let me change it to 36. Then that's 54. Um, so if you're at 36 to 55, that's a difference of 29 degrees, I believe, or no, 19 degrees. Yeah, 19 degrees. So now that's 19 degrees instead of 54. Um, that's a heck of a lot cheaper to cool. Um, but the thing is, you still want to insulate it. And the reason is is if you're keeping this at 36 and no insulation here, all that heat's still going to be, tr all that cool's still trying to go this way. And especially you want to make sure you insulate your floor because 60% of all your cold will go out the floor because heat rises, cold, cold falls. Um, so you do have to realize that as well too. Normally how these are built is they're, they pour concrete around and they pour the concrete roof. Um, so just do make sure that as you're doing that, you are insulating that thoroughly as well. Um, and on the, if you're putting insulation on the inside, you then want to put like a RFP board or something like a dairy board on the inside to keep it, you know, food safe and stuff. You don't want to just have uh, foam on the inside of your cooler. It's going to soak up the water, then it's going to lose its insulatory value, and it's going to do no good. So probably put that more on the outside, just around things. Or if you put it on the inside, make sure you have a vapor bear on the inside to cover it as well. So. Um, that's that. So again, it'll be a heck of a lot easier to cool. Do make sure you put insulation around. Do think about access and that sort of thing. So I know uh, friends of ours had a 36 inch door in theirs for years and it was incredibly inconvenient because you could not bring pallets in. So you want to make sure you at least have a 54 inch door. That way you can get your 40 inch or 44 inch pallets in very easily. Um, and then think about the height too. So if you have a 10 foot ceiling, you probably want to at least have an eight or nine foot door so you can start stacking bulk containers because eventually you're going to want to be able to move to bulk containers and stack those in your cooler as, so you can use, 
can be as efficient as possible. So um, again, think about farming, especially vegetable farming, is all about moving water around your farm. Vegetables are 80%, 90% water, and you're moving just product. It's just material handling is what product it comes down to be. I mean, it comes down from your seed and your fertilizer is, is material handling. Your water is material handling. When you're tilling, when you're your bed forming, it's all material handling you're putting together. Um, so yeah, think about that. The actual production of vegetables is a lot of material and how can you move that through your system as efficiently and as safely as possible. So um, I hope that helps. Um, and we will be back tomorrow night for another session. All right, go ahead, like, share, leave a comment below. Keep those comments coming. I'm sorry I haven't gotten to some of them that people have been messaging me. Um, some of them I have to do some more research on, um, and I, I have just been flat out, and I'm going to actually be gone next week out to Utah and uh, British Columbia, so um going to be, yeah, so the week after, we might be able to get to some of these, uh, these more bigger um, questions. So, all right, go ahead, um, have a great night. Hope you all have great markets tomorrow, you who are doing Saturday markets tomorrow. And uh, feel free to shoot us some pictures on the uh, Facebook group. I love seeing farmer's market pictures of what you're selling and uh, what's, what's working out there right now with the consumers. So have a great night and uh, see you tomorrow. All right. Mm -hmm.